Let me show you one of the most important unifications in physics of all time. These right here are Maxwell's equations for a vacuum without any charge. Look at them, they're beautiful. If you've never seen this upside down triangle before, do not worry. Think of it as a derivative operator vector. If we were to multiply it by the dot product, we call this the divergence. And if we use the cross product to multiply it with another vector, we call that the curl. James Clerk Maxwell noticed something spectacular about these equations. Let's take the second equation and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the curl of the curl of E. Okay, well this will then have to equal to the curl of negative the partial derivative of the magnetic field and these are just linear operators so what I can do is I can take the derivative outside of these brackets and what we'll have is negative d by dt of the curl of b. But hang on a minute, we already have an expression for the curl of b just here. So this means that I can write this as the negative time derivative of the curl of b, which is equal to mu naught e naught, where those two are just constants, times the, sec times the first derivative of d e with respect to t. Now I've got two derivatives here, meaning that this can just turn into the second derivative. And now what I'm going to do is use this identity from maths that says that the curl of the curl of a vector is equal to this expression. Applying this to the left hand side, we get that the curl of the curl of the electric field is going to equal to the gradient of the divergence of E. Then we're going to take away this bit here that is known as the Laplacian. You can think of it as a second spatial derivative and this will then be equal to the right hand side which is given by minus mu naught E naught times the second spatial second time derivative of the electric field. Hang on a minute, in the absence of charge the divergence of E is actually zero so the left hand side of this equation can go. Those two negative signs will also cancel one another and what I'm going to do is just rearrange for the time derivative and what we get is that the second time derivative of the electric field is actually equal to 1 over mu naught E naught multiplied by the Laplacian of E. And this right here is actually the equation of a traveling wave through a vacuum. It means that electromagnetic waves can propagate for a vacuum in the absence of charge with a speed given by the square root of this expression. Well, let's actually calculate the speed. We know the permeability of space and we know the permittivity of space. And if this expression is the square of the speed of light, all we would need to do is just square root this. And if we put this into a calculator, we're going to get around 2.99 etc times 10 to the 8 meters per second and this right here is the speed of light. When Maxwell discovered this he immediately knew that electricity and light were a manifestation of the same phenomena. In fact he commented the agreement of the results seems to show that light and magnetism are affections of the same substance. And in fact the light through which you're watching this video is nothing but the propagating electromagnetic wave according to this equation. Here is something strange though. The permeability and the permittivity of vacuum do not change according to the observer. So this means that the speed of light should be constant in all frames of reference. Well, a young pattern clerk by the name of Albert Einstein really believed that those equations are correct and he redesigned the whole of 
physics in consistency with the fact that the speed of light remains constant and this was the birth of relativity. Now in order to understand why does this equation represent a traveling wave through space you absolutely need to watch this video right over here for the wave equation. Click over here.